Okay. Well, as you can see behind me, my wing is done and gone. So that means time for the other side. Yesterday I riveted on the last bits of the nose skin, just followed the top spar. I went pretty quick. Um, built the shelf and stuck it on the wall. So that'll sit up there for a bit while I work on the other side. As you can see, I elected to leave the wing tip off and I didn't touch anything with the fuel system um, or the root skin or anything like that. Um, I figured I'll tackle those once I'm ready to throw it on the fuselage. I also elected to leave the lights off and the wiring undone. Um, you try and maybe save those for a rainy day. When you can see I get the start of all my parts laid out. Uh, I get the wing spar up on a shelf somewhere. I'll grab that. I was kind enough to myself before when I made made some of these for the other side to at least start with some on this side. I just gotta cut them out, but it's good progress. Oh wait, these are, these are halfway done. These are kind of a pain in the butt to make, so. Glad I got, glad I got those. Get moving with those and uh, get the skeleton Clico together. Quick little time lapse here of me putting together the first nose rib. I think I got a better idea of how I want these to look um, after I, Remember on the other other wing, I ran into some issues with this tip here. Um, it's actually when I first folded the wing skin or the nose skin over. Um, this corner down here was kind of digging into the skin. So what I did was I cut out that much material there. I just took a, a wide wide nose pliers and bent that flange down a little bit. Oh, it gives me a better contour of the nose right there. I think that works out, it should work out a little bit better. It's effectively what I ended up doing on the other wing. I was just cutting out that corner in there, so I think this is actually better than what I ended up hacking together on the other wing. So here I am assembling the other three nose ribs with the stiffener brackets with the leading edge slats attached to. And now assembling the skeleton. Um, went through and deburred everything before I assembled. Um, made life easier after the fact. Kind of learned that lesson on the, the first wing. Um, you can see me going back and forth to the grinding wheel over there. I got scotch bright on that. Um, and deburring all the holes and stuff like that. I think everything was final size there, so it worked out pretty well. Got the skeleton started here. I've uh, been drilling out all of the holes, kind of adding in the doublers and the strut attach plate and stuff like that. Uh, getting everything drilled to final size, so I'm in the process right now of pulling stuff apart. Then I got a deburr, uh, corrosion protection, and then I can start riveting it all back together. So I'll just kind of take you through about what I got and uh, actually made a really unfortunate discovery of a mistake I made on the right wing. So now I got to pull some skins off on that one. Um, but at least I caught it on this one, so I'll show you that. So nothing special here where the uh, ribs attached to the spar. I used my um, pilot hole drill to be able to open all of those holes up because once again the ribs were at a size 40 and the spar was at a size 20 so I just had to drill everything bigger and it all lines up nicely. Wing tip is already everything's match drilled there so no problem with that. Got the ends drilled here with the rear spar, or rear channel, sorry. Um, so I got all of those drilled out. And now to my error that I made in the other one. Um, I just noticed going through that the hole here right in the center of the strut attach plate is supposed to accept a AN3 bolt, so that needs to be a 3 16 diameter hole. Um, I know for a fact that I didn't put a bolt into the other wing, so 
with all of the skins riveted on that it is not going to be fun to pull that apart but it must be done um, so it'll probably be another another project for a rainy day once I get this wing wrapped up I'll have to make note um, other than that nothing too exciting do need the other wing I didn't um, I wasn't sure what to do but this wing I'm going to open take a little cut out of that doubler there so I can get a full full size hole there that's right where the fuel tank will come in I believe um, that way you can run the fuel line in the uh, the rear rear cap of the the wing so I'm gonna cut that out I don't know how I'm gonna do it at this point in time um, don't really have a, a good method for cutting so I'll have to figure that one out once I pull it apart but I'm gonna get going on pulling the rest of this apart and starting to deburr. So I skipped a little bit on recording, but I got the skeleton deburred and cleaned up. So here I am attaching the bottom skins. All of the holes had to be drilled out to their final size. So pretty much a tedious task of clicking every hole going through and adding everything in. There goes the trailing edge, same story there. I've got all of my flapper on attach brackets in. I've got my jury strut attach bracket. Uh, I've got the L angles underneath there, drilled into those. Um, oh, looking at it, I still need to add my L angle stiffeners in there. Um, I added the the L's to the tips here. Um, got the extra piece in here. Got all of my holes drilled out in my nose ribs. Uh, I do need to still drill out um, this last set of holes here into the tip rib. Um, and then I gotta double check the plans. I think I gotta open up this hole through the end um, up to an A5. I went up to this one just because that's where the spar stopped. Um, I gotta check my plans. I need to put in the pitot tube, which I gotta double check is I think somewhere out here. Um, so I gotta cut the hole for that. But I. I can do that after I get everything riveted in, I think. Actually, it would probably be easier to uh, deburr if I do it now. I screwed up on the other wing, so I only had one of the the uh, stiffener brackets that go here for the, the strut support. Um, so I ordered a new one from Zenith today. Like nine bucks, I figured. That, then I don't have to worry about trying to cut one and bend it at a 90 degree angle for myself. Um, so I'll leave those at a size 40 until I get the new piece and be able to drill those out. Um, come back through, I think everything else is good where it's at. I'm gonna leave these at a size 40. Um, I'll leave these at a 30. And I haven't even put this uh, first rib in yet. Um, so it should be good there. Yeah, so I think tonight I'm going to start, uh, I'll put these stiffeners in here, um, drill out the last bits on the tip there, and start tearing everything apart and cleaning. So let's get to it. So adding in all of the stiffeners through the skins is really kind of a pain in the butt. I think the plans say they're supposed to be pre-drilled. So cut them to length, drill a hole 10 millimeters from one end, and kind of stick them in. Got to get a hand under there to get the first couple cleat goes in. And then you just go through and drill out the rest of the holes. Show you guys what I'm doing here to uh, install the pitot tubes. Um, so I got two of the holes drilled, center punched the other ones. These ones I could do on the drill press, but it was hitting the tubes up here. Um, so I got a center punch there, marked in, I don't know, um, probably 12, 15 millimeters um, in from the edges. And then I'm gonna drill 
a center hole here. I marked in uh, per the plans, 10 millimeters in from this side. There are 10 millimeters in from the rivet line on the rib, and then 80 millimeters forward from the spar. Um, so marked that, and that is kind of where the the pitot tube will sit in that location. Um, so I'm going to drill a hole. I'll be able to drop this down into the hole, and then drill these out. Actually, hold it correctly. Um, It'll drill back through these into the skin, um, and I can open everything up to A4 rivet. I've seen some other guys put a access panel here and then mount this to the access panel. Uh, I still might do that. Looks like a good idea that way. If I ever want to take this out and put in a heated pitot tube or something like that, it'd be pretty easy change out. Um, but for the time being, I'll stick with just what came, just because it's simple. Okay, so this corner up here marks this corner here. Um, so I'm going to measure in, figure out where I put where I put that hole, and I'll measure in, put the same hole here, um, and then drill a center hole just to pass all of the tubing and stuff through, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I got a close up here, you can see you've got the corner of where that plate goes, and then I marked in, uh, my holes were 13 millimeters in from the edges, so put a crosshairs there. I will um, drill out that hole so I can get my, my location set, and then I'll drill out the center. Okay, so I got my two holes in. Um, this one is the corner rivet location of the plate that's attached to the pitot tube. And then this is the hole that I'm going to enlarge to pass everything through. Um, quick measurement on there, looks like I'm gonna need about a three quarter inch to maybe seven eighths inch diameter hole. Um, in order to get everything through there. I might try and file down some of that, um, that way I can keep some edge distance on there. So, get to it. And now we have the always exciting task of taking everything apart, deburring all of the holes, top and bottom on the skeleton and the skins, and then clean everything, do some cortex primer and put it back together. Quick peek at everything before I start uh, pulling all the rivets. As you can see, I've got everything just very loosely clicoed in. Um, kind of found that in reassembling it helps to, the less clicos you put in, the better. And then you can get all of the, the rivets to nicely drop into all of the holes that you pre drilled. So you get a much, much tighter fit because the rivets fit tighter than the. Uh, and the cleat goes. So that's kind of what I do. And if I ever, hopefully this drops down. If not, I might stick a couple more clecos in there. I'll pull a rivet, rivet out and put a cleco in. I think you gotta flip flop these two. I'll double check the plans, make sure that I got the way that all of these are supposed to sit correct. I'm get this one right. I just gotta, this back one's gotta go on top of here. So I got corrosion protection there. Of course the 
nose skin goes on top of the top and bottom skins. And then the trailing edge goes underneath the bottom skin. Got this cleat coat in. I forgot on the other wing, but I need to remember to do it on this wing. This Clico right there is actually a bolt. Um, so I gotta put the bolt in before I, before I put the other trailing edge on. That was where I screwed up on the last one. I got the trailing edge on and I completely forgot about doing the bolt. I'll do a video later, but on my other skin, I got a uh, small little cutout panel that I'm going to put there and an access panel here. That way I'll be able to drill the hole for the bolt and be able to get in there for future inspections and stuff. I'll be able to take a look at the the plate and everything, or the, uh, the attached bracket. So I'll set the rest of this on uh, time lapse and you can watch me work away. I think by far the most fun you can have when you're building an airplane is putting all the rivets back in. Really see all the work come back together. It goes pretty quick, as I mentioned. Put all the rivets in as many as possible with as few Clecos. I think it lines everything a little better and the rivets go in much easier. So did that and I'll check up with the next video and uh, show you how I do the top skin.